In this section, we are going to start by looking at the definition of a class, after which we'll see how to create and use a class in PHP. So what is a class? There are so many definitions for what a class is in various textbooks, and I'm sure if you just do a simple Google search on the internet, you are going to find out that there are lots of definitions of what a class is. One of the most popular definitions is that a class is a blueprint from which objects are created. So you take note here that we have two keywords, template or blueprint, and then objects. We have this template and using this template, we can create a number of objects, meaning that an object is just an instance of that specific template. This is actually a very good definition of what a class is. So there's a more simpler definition of what a class is, which I want to discuss with you in this lecture. A class is simply data plus behavior. So when we think about data, we are actually referring to storage. And when we think about behavior, we are referring to methods or functions. In the context of object-oriented programming, they will be referred to as methods, but they are simply functions. So logically, a class is simply a coupling between data and the operations on that data. The way that we actually store data in class is through their properties. So each class will have a set of properties that is going to actually be the storage for data. A property is simply like a variable. So a variable is a container that stores information. The same thing for a class property. It is simply a variable that stores information about that class. And then we have methods, which are the operations that can be performed on those data. Now that we have a basic understanding of what a class is, let's now see how to create a class in PHP. Right here, I have my blank OOP project and just one index file, which is also empty. To create a class in PHP, we start with the class keyword and then followed by the name of the class. It is generally good practice to name your class using proper case. So we start with a capital letter and then all lower case. If there are two words, you can use comma case to actually name your class. And then after specifying the name, we then open and close curly braces. This is the basic structure of a class in PHP. Start with the keyword class and then the name of the class and then open and close curly braces. In order to create an instance of this class, we use the new keyword. So let's come here and say introduction going to be equal to new video. So vadump introduction. And then let's just view this on the command line. So if I run php index.php should display for us that an object. So as you can see here, introduction is an object of the video class. But right now we have not done anything with the class. We have not defined any properties for this class, no data, and then also there is no behavior. Okay, so let's now begin to add some properties to this class. Remember from what I told you previously, the properties are simply variables. They are going to be holding the data for this specific class. So the very first properties that we'll create will be the type of the video. So we're going to say public type. And then we are also going to create another property. So we're going to call this public duration. Then we're going to create the next one, public published. So this is going to determine if the video has been published or the video has not been published. So by default, we set this to false. Public title. Let's run this again. If you prefer to use the browser, you can also run this in the browser. So right now you can see that this object now have few properties. First one is type and the value is null. The next one is duration, the value is null. The next one is published and the value is false. While the last one is title and the value is also null. These are the properties of this specific class and the data that are being stored on those properties. Remember, the properties are simply variables which hold the data. They are actually storage. The next thing we want to look at now are operations. As I mentioned previously, these are simply methods. In procedural programming, these will be functions. But when inside of a class, we refer to them as methods. So let's come here and say public function play. So this is a video. A video can be played and also a video can be paused. So we can create another function, public function post. 
So whenever we call this method play, we are sending a message to this class video. In other words, we are sending a message to the current object that is being used. Once the object receives that message, it is going to execute the code that corresponds to the specific message. So right here, we are going to say return this published. So if this video is published, we just say the video is playing. Otherwise, we're just going to say the video is not available yet. So if you notice here, you see that I introduced something new, which is this. So this is something that is very important that you take note of when working with object oriented programming. So when we want to refer to the properties or methods that are defined inside of a class, we use this word this. As long as they are not static properties or static methods, which we have not discussed about, we'll be covering all of that in the series, we use the keyword this. And this simply refers to whichever object is currently being used so in our case this will refer to introduction so introduction will be this so once we create a new instance of this video class this now refers to this particular instance that was created so at any given point in time if we create a new instance video 2 equals new video this is one instance this is a second instance so when you are using video 2 this we refer to video two. When you are using introduction object, this we refer to introduction. It's as simple as that, not complicated at all. So what we are saying here is if the published property is true for this particular object, we want you to display the video is playing. Otherwise we want to display the video is not yet available. Return this published. If it is published, we're just going to say the video has been paused video is paused. Otherwise, we're just going to display an empty string. Because logically, if you cannot play a video, then you cannot actually pause it. The video has to be playing before you can pause it. And for the video to play in our case study here, it needs to be published. Let's now see how to send a message to the introduction object. So we can come down here and say introduction play. So on line 21, we create an instance of the video class, name it introduction. On line 22, we are actually sending a message. We are saying, play the video. So it's going to take this message, come inside of the class, and then look for the corresponding code, and then return us whatever is inside of the code. Let me run this on the browser. We see here that we have a video object. We also see that it just display what we put inside of the vadom function. It did not actually display what is being returned from the play method. So if you look at the play method that we have here, look at the definition, we are saying return. So whenever you are returning something from a method or a function, you need to actually echo it out. So right here we say echo, introduction, play. And then now let's do a reload on the browser. Here we see the video is not yet available, followed by the object. Okay, I'm going to clean things up in the test editor so it's more easier to illustrate. And then right here, I'm going to set my header. I'm going to set the content type to be plain test. And then here, I'm going to use the PHP constant, end of line. So we're going to say PHP underscore end of line. And then I'm going to call the next method, which will be introduction pause. If we look back again at the result that was displayed, you see that this video is not yet available, which is because inside of our code, the published property is actually set to false. So we can say introduction, so we can then look for that specific property. So published, and then we set this to be equal to true. So this is one way that we refer to properties of a particular object or a particular class, and then we can actually change the value of that property going to copy line 24 and then use it for video 2. Right, so let's do a reload on the browser. There you can see that the video is playing, the video is paused, the video is not yet available. The third line in the output is actually referring to video 2 object, which the published property is still set to false. Let's take a look at the code again. Right here, you can see that the published property is false by default. 
But for this instance, which is introduction, we set the property to true. Why for the second instance, which is video, we did not do anything with that property? This goes back to what I said previously, that this will always refer to the object that you are currently working with. And the last thing that I'd like to talk about here will be setting arbitrary properties for a particular object. So if you look at the class definition again, we only defined four properties for this class. Type, duration, publish, title. But once we create an object of this class, we can actually set arbitrary property. So I could say introduction auto this is equal to Terry O. So let's come here and say introduction auto. You can see that by definition that auto is actually not part of the properties defined for the video class. So we are just adding this property right here, auto, and then setting a value for it. And then right here, I actually want to display it. So let me grab the PHP EOL and then add it to the statement. And then let's do a reload on the browser. And you can actually see the value of that property displayed here. Terry O. Even why this is true that we can assign arbitrary properties to object in PHP, it is not something that you want to practice. You want to ensure that all of the properties that you'll be using for your class are well defined inside of the class and documented. You should actually avoid doing this when you are building classes for your project. So just a quick recap of what we have done. We have looked at how to create a class in PHP how to create properties for that class and assign values to the properties. So in this case, we created a property called published and assigned a value of false, while the other properties had no values. And then we also looked at how to actually create methods, which would define the behavior of this particular class. So in our case, the video class has two methods that defines its behavior. You can play the video and you can also pause the video. Nothing else you can do with this particular video. These are the only behaviors that you can actually perform for this particular video class. And these are the properties that are defined for this class. So going back to our definition, this class simply consists of behavior and data. The methods are the behavior, while the properties are actually the storage for the data. And then we saw how to create an instance of a class so we created an instance of the video class and stored it in a variable called introduction. And then we saw how to assign values to the properties of that specific class. I explained to you the concept of this, that this always refer to the current object that you are working with. So right here, we have two objects. In any case, this will be specific to that particular object. Introduction will be this when it is being used. Video 2 will be this when it is being used. And then we finally saw how to actually send a message to the object. And then the object returns us a value based on the code that is defined inside of the method. All right, that will be all for this lesson. I'll see you in the next lecture.